Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a key concept in technical analysis and active trading, as well as support and resistance formation, which is Fibonacci retracement. It is a very interesting and uh, mathematically inspired technique that uses Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio to construct support and resistance lines for your stock price dynamics based on all-time highs and all-time lows. So here we have got plenty of data on our hands. We have got the full history of S&P 500 index from year-end 1927 until year-end 2021. We'll be able to properly calculate the all-time highs and all-time lows and construct the retracement, and then use some clever linear regressions to test whether those retracements actually are fulfilled, whether they inform uh, market dynamics, whether they do impact returns, whether it is beneficial to trade on them, whether this technical analysis technique works, pretty much. So first of all, we'll need to calculate all-time highs and all-time lows based on our price data, and here we can simply use the max function for the all-time high, referring first to the very first price, locking the row, and then referring to the current price, that would quite naturally construct all-time highs throughout our sample. So here we can see that as of uh, year-end 2021, we're slightly below the all-time high that was uh, present on the 29th of December. You can see it over here, and we can see how the all-time high is uh, consistently updated through time. And the all-time low, well, the same logic, but the minimum function is used instead. So here we see that our all-time low is 4.40, and that is the value of the index that was observable at the depth of the Great Depression in the 1930s. And now, to test our retracements, we have to figure out the ratio in terms of the percentage value where we are currently at in terms of our all-time high and all-time low with respect to these values. To do that, we have to calculate the ratio in the numerator we would have the difference between the current value of the price and the all-time low, and in the denominator we would have the all-time high minus the all-time low. So we basically scale our price uh, by the difference, by the range of the all-time high and the all-time low. And we obviously can only start at the second day of our sample, as in the very first day our all-time high and all-time low match, so the result would not be well defined. Here we see that we've got 100%, meaning that we are at the all-time high. And then we can double right click it all the way down to see where we are uh, at every single trading day in terms of um, the all-time high and all-time low. Here we see that we are at the end of our sample, at the 31st of December 2021. We are much, much closer to the all-time high than the all-time low, quite naturally. 99.45% is our ratio. Uh, whereas if we go to somewhere... Um, less bullish of a market, let's say if we go to March 2020, we would see that at the bottom of the pandemic-related crisis, we had the ratios as low as 66%, for example, over here, when S&P uh, crashed uh, below 3,000, when S&P was traded at around 2,000, our ratio is 66% over here. And this particular procedure performs this calculation for every single sample day. So now let's discuss our retracements. Those are also numbers between 0 and 1 that form support and resistance lines based on the all-time highs and the all-time lows. So first, we need to consider that those lines, those percentages, are based on the golden ratio. And this is equal to square root of 5 plus 1 over 2. So that is approximately equal to 1.618. And the property of the golden ratio, why is it so relevant and so frequently used in mathematics, architecture, and even finance, as I'm showing you right now, is that 1 over the golden ratio, so 1 divided by it, is equal to 0 0.618. So it's exactly equal to the golden ratio minus 1. So this relationship is quite crucial to form those retracement lines. 
So most commonly, we use seven different retracement lines, and three of them are quite intuitive, and the other four are based on the application of the golden ratio. So the lowest retracement line is zero, which is the all-time low, meaning that if we are close to the all-time low, it naturally acts as a support line. Then the highest retracement um, level is quite naturally one or 100%, meaning that if we are close to the all-time high, it naturally acts as a resistance. Then there is a retracement level of 0 0.5, Whereas it's not based on the golden ratio, it's based on another concept from technical analysis called the GAN theory. It is quite controversial. Some uh, technical traders do not believe that 0 0.5 is a relevant retracement, but it's still quite commonly used when modeling Fibonacci retracement. Whereas other four retracement lines are actually uh, entirely based on uh, the golden ratio and the logic of the Fibonacci sequence. Well, 0 0.5, it means that we either approach uh, the halfway point between the all-time high and the all-time low from below, and then it's resistance, or from above, and then there is support. The most commonly used um, retracement level based on the golden ratio is actually 1 over the golden ratio, which is naturally 0 0.618. That's the most frequently used um, retracement level that is inspired by the golden ratio. The Second most commonly used level is based on 1 minus the uh, previously identified level, 0 0.3820, or it can also be calculated as the previous level divided by the golden ratio that gives you exactly the same result. Here, the mathematics of the Fibonacci numbers are in action. Uh, so these five are the ones that you will uh, end up using in most of uh, Fibonacci retracement applications. Two of the fringer, uh, Fibonacci retracements are either uh, 0 0.382 divided by the golden ratio again, which gives you 0 0.2361, and 1 minus this particular retracement line that gives you 0 0.7639. This one is uh, by uh, a long margin the most controversial of these, as the mathematics of the golden ratio would say that these two should be the only uh, retracement levels over 0 0.5. Nevertheless, this level is uh, very frequently used simply because we need to populate um, the region between 0 0.5 and 1 with more retracement lines. But we'll be able to test whether these two more controversial levels work or not. So here we'll be able to retrieve which are the closest uh, upper and lower retracement lines, uh, depending on our current ratio, and that would allow us to calculate the uh, retracement in terms of the support and resistance indicator. And that's actually quite similar to the mathematics of support and resistance that I explained in a couple of prior videos, both in Excel and in Python. So check these out if you're interested in support and resistance modeling and testing based on uh, other considerations, such as psychologically irrelevant um, around number uh, barriers, stuff like that. But today we're interested in applying uh, a similar logic based on Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. So the upper bound is the lowest of the retracement levels that is in excess or at least that is equal to the current ratio. So it's the minimum if our retracements over here, and we have to lock the rows here, are greater or equal to the current ratio, we return these, and we return one otherwise, so that we do not consider the retracements that are uh, below our current ratio. And that gives us 100% as our upper boundary, quite naturally over here, uh, and that's quite trivial, but if we apply this function throughout, we will be able to see that here, for example, when our ratio is 60%, the relevant uh, upper bound is 0 0.618, the fifth retracement, as per our calculations uh, that we've done previously. The lower bound, um, as an extension of the same method, is the maximum if our retracements are strictly below the current ratio. And if it is the case, if this uh, condition is fulfilled, we return the area of retracements and we return zero otherwise, so that we are not uh, interested in the retracement levels that are above 
our ratio as we are interested in the lower band here. And then we see that if we are uh, between 76.39 and uh, 1, then these are our relevant upper and lower bounds. And uh, by an extension, we can see that 60% is between 61.8 and 50, 29.27 is between 38.2 and 23.61, and so on and so forth. And now we can finally calculate our stock returns. Uh, that is the return of the S&P 500 on a particular day, price today divided by the price yesterday minus one, straightforward enough. And we need to calculate the relevant retracement on the previous day to figure out whether Fibonacci retracements do predict uh, following stock returns, stock returns on the following day. And here, the logic is very similar to one we used to calculate the ratio to start with. We figure out um, whether our current ratio is closer to the upper bound or to the lower bound and uh, come around with the figure between 0 and 1 as well. And that would mean how close we are to either our support. If this number is small, it would mean that we're closer to the support line and meaning that we would expect our stock return to be higher than average. And if it's closer to 1, then it would mean that we're closer to the relevant resistance line, the uh, upper uh, Fibonacci retracement line, uh, meaning that we would expect our stock return to be lower than average. To implement this procedure, we can uh, consider the ratio and the upper and lower band for the previous day, so that we are not forward-looking in our calculations, and do the following. Subtract the lower bound from the current ratio, and divide it by the difference uh, between the upper and lower bounds. And the only uh, concern we might have here is that for zero, our result would be undefined. But we know that 0% is a natural support line, so if we are at the all-time low, then we would um, consider it to be a support line. So if our ratio is equal to 0, we return 0 automatically, and that would prevent any errors in our calculations. So here we see that if we are at the all-time high, the result is naturally 100%, meaning that we are as close to a resistance level as possible. And then we apply it throughout our sample, calculating the uh, location of our current ratio uh, in terms of the relevant, the two neighboring retracement lines. And if it's above 50%, we are more strongly in the resistance territory. And if it's below 50%, we are more strongly in the support territory. So how one might test whether the retracements actually work? Well, consider the following. If we regress the returns onto the relevant retracements, we would expect a negative coefficient on our uh, independent variable, which is the retracement. That would mean that the support and resistance uh, logic here actually works. And if the result is insignificant, then, well, retracements do not uh, predict stock returns at all. And we'll be able to accommodate it for various subsamples and also for varying sets of retracements. This particular parameterization is actually pretty flexible, and we'll be able to see how flexible it is and what are the different um, parameterizations we can uh, input uh, in a moment. So first, let's just regress our returns on relevant retracements um, for the full sample for uh, more than 90 years of the S&P 500 history, calculating the linear regression of the returns onto the relevant retracements, and then specify that we do need the constant here, as that would be the return at the support, and we need additional statistics to figure out the standard errors of the coefficients and the degrees of freedom for some hypothesis testing. And as we enforce this formula to shift control enter, we will be able to see that our regression results are not as expected by the relevant theory. Our B coefficient which is the impact of our retracement on returns, is positive, meaning that we haven't got the support and resistance dynamics. And we can verify it by dividing the coefficient by the respective standard error, returning a t-stat of 0 0.97, and test it using a two-tailed t-distribution, inputting the absolute value of our t-stat and the number of degrees of freedom here. So we can see that if we include all of the seven retracement lines, and consider the 90 plus year time period, retracements do not work for the S&P 500 as we haven't got a negative and significant coefficient for B. However, let's see whether the change in our set of uh, candidate retracement values uh, impacts the results.
Let's remove the most controversial retracement level, which is 0 0.7639. If we remove that, our test statistic goes down. If we remove the second most controversial retracement level, 0 0.2361, our t stat is now negative, and the p value is actually um, quite low, but not low enough for us to conclude that the result is significant. And if we remove the uh, retracement level of 0 0.382, we have got a marginally insignificant result with a t statistic of minus 1.41. However, let's consider whether the retracement uh, phenomena are more recent on the US stock market as the S&P 500 benchmark has become more and more relevant in terms of proxying the overall market dynamics as time went on. For example, let's consider the past 10 year period. So let's only input the uh, sample uh, data starting from uh, start of 2012 and ending at the uh, end of 2021. So if, for example, we want to select the data from the year end 2021, if we want to input data from the start of 2012, we will need to look at um, data points from row 17,243 onwards. So if we manually change our sum references, 17,243, 17,243, we would see that for more recent uh, time horizons, for 10 most recent years, retracements actually do work very well for the US stock market. So here we are able to see that retracements are not universally applicable and some of them do not work that well for the US stock market, but on more recent time horizons when we are only concerned with the most relevant theoretically and practically retracement uh, candidate values, we still can get um, a significant result that is potentially are useful to inform some trading strategies based on technical analysis and support and resistance. And that's all there is for the illustration of Fibonacci retracement applications for S&P 500. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.